Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to create a basic fading effect for your character. Um, so the way it works is that when the camera gets close to the character, so if I, you can see I move the camera in, you can see the player starts to fade away, and if I get all the way like below him, then he fades away completely. So he fades based on the distance from the camera. Uh, this is super useful when you're like up against a wall, for example, and you try to look um, like this way. You can see as I get close to my character, he starts to fade away so I can see through him. And, you know, it doesn't create any weirdness with having the camera right up against the player. So that's basically what it'll look like when it's done. Uh, with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to be doing this from scratch. So let's go ahead and open up the Epic Game Launcher. And I'm on version 4.24.2. So I'm going to go ahead and just launch that. And we're going to be using the third person blueprint. So go to games down here, hit next, and then select third person and hit next. And we don't need any starter content. And I'm just going to name this um, player fade. And make sure you have blueprint, blueprint selected up here at the top left. And then go ahead and hit create. And while it's creating, I'm going to move this over here just so I can kind of reference it. Okay, so. The first thing we're going to need to do is modify the material that's on our character so that it supports this fading effect. And the fading that we're going to use is something called, I think it's called dithered fading. And the way it works is that it just, um, as you specify that you want it to be more and more faded, it stops rendering more and more pixels of the sky to give it the illusion that it is um, becoming transparent. So to do that, um, go ahead and open up the third person character blueprint. You can do that just by selecting him and then clicking over here on the right. And we wanna find the material that this guy is using. So if you click on the mesh over here on the left, you can see it actually uses two materials, um, which is fine, but it's gonna be a little bit more work since it's two materials instead of one. But you know, I'm sure in most games, the, the character only has one material. But since this guy has two, we're gonna to have to um, do it for two materials. But if you go ahead and you take a look at these, so click a little magnifying glass here next to the top one, and it brings you into the content mannequin character mannequin folder. So if you double click on this one and open it up, you can see this is the main material for the character's body. And if you go back and you double click on the other one, you can see it actually is a child because if you come over here to the top and you click on hierarchy you can see that it's parent in the parent chain list its parent is this m underscore ue4 man body which is this one so i'm just showing you this because since this is a child of this anything that we do here will get applied to this one as well so we really only need to do the um dithered like the translucent effect inside of here so it's actually pretty simple um to do there's a really helpful node to uh, do stuff like this it's called dithered temporal aa and we want to pass in a float value to it so hold down one and left click to create a constant one you can also right click and search for constant and click this just constant it does the same thing and we're going to hook that up to our alpha threshold and so if this is one then he's going to be like fully visible like normal and if it's zero then he's going to be totally transparent so we want to default this to one because by default we want him to be fully visible. All right, so now that we have this, we just need to go ahead and combine it with this before we actually return it. So there's a special node for that. Um, if you search for mat layer blend underscore, and we're trying to add an opacity mask. So we can search for override opacity mask and you can see it pops up right here. We want mat layer blend override opacity mask. Go ahead and click on that. So before we return this, let's go ahead and bring it into here. And our new opacity mask is this one. And let's go ahead and return that. Now, if you're not super familiar with um, material attributes, like I really wasn't before I started doing this, um, one thing to kind of note here. So the reason that this looks like this and only has one thing here, and usually there's a lot more, is because this is, has used material attributes checked. If you go ahead and you uncheck this, because um, this might be what your material looks like if you're using uh, a different material. And if that's the case, then you would just want to plug this dithered opacity into the opacity mask directly, like so. 
But since this is using material attributes, and so it basically combines all of these into one, um, this is how you would do that. You would you have to use this matte layer blend override opacity mask and then use that. Because really all these material attributes are, like if you search for break um, material attributes, you can see this takes in a material attribute and it breaks it into all of these, which are the exact same things that this would return um, if this wasn't checked. So, so you can see these are all line up exactly. So, but I just wanted to show you that in case anybody was confused. But for the Unreal Engine mannequin um, material, this is what you need to do um, to get it to work with how they have it. Okay, so we can apply and wait for this to apply. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. So this um, this little constant variable over here, we need to make this a parameter because we want to be able to change it at, at runtime. So right click and say convert to parameter. And this is the opacity. So I'm going to rename it to opacity. Okay, now let's apply that. And save. And we'll wait for it to save. Okay, and now that we have that done, we can go back to our third person character and hook up the logic to actually adjust that value. So in order to change this value, we need to create a dynamic instance of this material so that we can change it at runtime. So back in the event graph, um, come up to the top here and add the event begin play node. And like I said, we need a material or a dynamic material instance. So right click and say create dynamic material instance. And the parent is going to be the M underscore UE for man body, which again is just the one we just edited. And let's go ahead and promote this to a variable so we can keep track of it. And we'll call this um, player body material. And let's go ahead and set that because remember, if you look at our mesh, it has two materials on it. It has one in element zero and one in element one. So the body is part of element zero, so we need to set the element zero to this dynamic material instance that we just created. So drag in the mesh and say set material and leave index element as zero because we're setting the zero element and hook that up to our material. And we want to do the exact same thing, but for this material down here. So again, right click and say create material or create dynamic material instance. Um, except the parent this time is going to be our UE4 man chest logo. So search for UE4 man, or that's not what's called, M underscore UE4 man chest logo. And again, we want to promote this to a variable. We'll call it player chest logo material. And once again, we want to drag off this and say, or not off of that, we want to drag in the mesh and say set material. And we want to make sure that the element index is set to one this time, because again, this is the element one for the chest. And we'll hook that up. Okay, so now we have our dynamic material instance created and set. The last thing we need to do is just update them so that every tick, um, it updates the opacity of them based off where the camera is. So to do that, we're going to do that inside of the event, the event tick. So go ahead and create an event tick node. And like I said, it's going to be based off where the camera is as compared to the character. So we'll drag in the follow camera and we'll say get world location. And we will also get the location of ourselves. So get actor location. And we want to know the distance between these. So we'll say distance. And we want to clamp this um, or we want to convert this from a distance value to a value of zero or one because this is zero to one is what this is expecting you know zero is going to be totally transparent one is going to be totally visible so we want to clamp whatever this distance is between zero and one so there's a handy little function called map clamp range and what this will do is it will take in a range you can see in range a and b and it will convert it to an out range of out range a and b so we already know we want the out range to be zero and one because that's what the material is expecting. Um, and the in range here is really depending on what, like how soon you want the fading to begin and how soon you want it to end. So the A value is essentially when do you want the fading to be totally finished. So I'm gonna say like 90, these are just values I thought looked good when I did it. And the in range B is essentially when you want it to start the fading. 
So I'm going to say, okay, so when the camera is 160 units away from the character, let's start. And then over time, as it gets towards 90, it will slowly start to fade. And then once it reaches 90, he'll be totally faded out. So now this is going to be a value from 0, 1, which represents our opacity. So we can just go ahead and print that to the string or print that to the screen just so you can kind of see like exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, you don't need to do this, obviously. It's just to kind of give you a better idea of what's going on. So we'll just print that real quick. But the main thing we want to do with this is we want to set this opacity value to whatever that is. So to do that, drag in your body material instance and say set scalar parameter value and make sure you set the parameter name to opacity since that is the name of the parameter that we made over here. And then go ahead and I'm just going to create a little reroute node by double clicking and go ahead and hook that up down there. Just going to kind of clean this up a little bit so it's easier to read. Something like that. That's good enough. And then we need to do it for our other uh, material as well. So drag this guy in and set the scalar parameter. And again, type in opacity. And we want to set it to whatever this value is. Just like so. All right, so now I believe, unless I did something wrong, that it should be working. Oh, one thing I want to change real quick is change, drop down the print string and change the duration to zero. That'll just make it so it only shows up for one frame, so it's constantly updated. Okay, so you can see at the top left, it's just printing out one, so that's basically saying he has, you know, he's fully visible. And if I start creeping closer, you can see it starts going down towards zero, and you can see he starts to fade out. So yeah, that pretty much concludes the tutorial. Um, feel free to play around with these values as much as you want um, to adjust it. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.